Hey Wargamers, today I want to talk about some rumors that have been circulating around the internet about the upcoming Tau Codex and what is going to be in it. Uh, before we do that though, I want to say thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead, hit the like button and the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way you don't miss any of my upcoming uploads. All right, so uh, basically there's a rumor coming out of the advanced Tau Tactica forums uh, circulated through multiple different uh, entities like Fate212 and other uh, rumor websites that gives us an idea of what might be in the Tau Codex. Now, I'll say up front, I don't, I don't know how real this is or how much uh, salt to take with it. Um, you know, a lot of things that I see end up on Fate 212 or on other rumor sites, I really just don't believe. But a lot of the things that are in this rumor are things that I kind of expected to be in the codex. So whether that's because this person actually has access to rules or because uh, it's just, you know, common sense type of stuff, I don't know. But let's take a look at it and kind of see what, you know, what it might mean, even if it does end up being just a wash and this is all for fun anyway. So let's take a look and uh, break it down. There's a link in the description below if you want to see the article I'm referring to. But uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, basically, it says that um, hammerheads and riptides are going to be big deals in the new codex. This is something that I kind of expected just because right now there's things about each of them that really just don't really work in the current codex. For riptides, it's that they're way too expensive for what they do. And for hammerheads, they're just not quite as effective as you want them to be. And so major points drops for riptides and... Uh, increased firepower or like increased damage characteristics on hammerheads or and or stratagems for hammerheads are going to make them much more useful and these are the types of changes that we've seen in transitioning armies from the index to the codex we've seen it in tyranids we've seen it in astro militarum we've seen it in pretty much every codex that has come out so far so it makes sense that that same type of change is going to be occurring for tau um, as far as whether burst, burst cannons or um, ion cannons are going to be better for, excuse me, ion accelerators are going to be better for riptides, uh, the guy says either and or both. Uh, they're both going to have um, some really crazy stratagems and that the firepower has skyrocketed while the point cost has dropped hard for both of them. So what I think this means mostly is that um, you know, both of them are going to have better weapon characteristics. Uh, we're going to see a pretty significant points drop for both of them, both in terms of their base point cost, but also their um, upgrade costs. So like their weapon costs are going to be cheaper. Um, and we see evidence of that at the bottom of the rumor where it says that um, one weapon can be heavy 18, strength 6, minus 1 AP, and 2 damage for 35 points. To me, that sounds a lot like a heavy burst cannon, which is currently 55 points. So that's a 20 point drop in the heavy burst cannon. Um, and whether or not that's the standard profile or the Nova charge profile, doesn't say. Um, it's closer to the Nova profile. So let's assume that's, that's it. Um, but even if it is just the Nova profile, that's a huge increase in output. And having two damage each is, is pretty nice. So. I can really see that making heavy burst cannons a worthwhile choice. Um, as far as what types of stratagems uh, he might be referring to, like what would be an insane stratagem for, for riptides? Well, I think probably it's gonna be something like allowing them to fire twice um, or potentially allowing them to get all the benefits of Nova charging. Uh, I think those are two types of stratagems that are pretty good, obviously, um, but not something outside the realm of what they've done for other armies. So stratagem that allows Riptides to fire twice is kind of reminiscent of the um, Riptide wing and uh, allowing them to gain all the benefits of Nova charging kind of makes them a little bit more in line with um, things that we saw with like the Earthcast pilot array or um, just making Nova charging a better tool for them. The next part of the rumor regards savior protocols and it basically says that the way savior protocols works is pretty much the same. The only difference now is that it happens on a two up as opposed to automatically. Uh, he references crisis bodyguards and um, 
Shadow Sun with uh, stealth suits. So that kind of mechanic where it happens only on a two up, um, you know, that, that makes sense. It's gonna happen most of the time for you, so I'm fine with that. I would prefer it to be an automatic thing, but uh, you know, it, it kind of helps address some of the issues that we've seen with commander spam armies and drone, drone spam armies. So, you know, yeah, that, that's fine for me. It's basically like the old lookout sir rule, which I thought was fine. And uh, overall, this doesn't seem like, seem to be a big deal. It does apply a bit of a nerf, but you know, if you're relying on drones to tank every shot for you, uh, that's not uh, that's not necessarily uh, cunning generalship. So, uh, you know, throwing a little bit of chance in there and, and making sure that you can't fully rely on it seems fair to me and is is not a big deal. Uh, other things that they've done in the codex, according to this rumor, to address some of the current meta-oriented armies. Uh, commanders are only one per detachment. I don't know how much I believe that just because they seem to shy away from this type of one per detachment limitation uh, or like a zero one limitation seems really old school. And I would be surprised if that's actually how they manifest this control on commander span armies. I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but it just seems a little old school to me that they would do that. So, um, but you know, hey, if it's true, that's fine. You know, you can take multiple detachments, uh, even you probably should, especially considering how good the stratagems are gonna be, you're gonna wanna take multiple detachments. So having two or three commanders is probably fine. Um, that's not, that's not uh, really that big of a nerf for most people. Um, it says no changes to market light tables. That's fine. I've been of the opinion all along that the market light table is fine, especially with this new stratagem that allows you to, uh, you know, blow up one market light into multiple. Getting five market lights isn't that big of a deal anymore. So, uh, you know, market light table staying the same seems fine. It also says there's no changes to ballistic skill across the board. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, people that have been saying that ballistic skill is going to be changing. It's, it's not going to happen. Fire Warriors have always been hitting on fours. They're going to hit on fours until they, uh, until Games Workshop declares bankruptcy. Uh, that's never going to change. So yeah, no big surprises there. Uh, no changes to railguns. That's a little surprising. I thought they would put something in for railguns, whether it's a stratagem or um, a baseline weapon improvement, like instead of having you know, maybe it like automatically does three three damage and then you just scale from three to six damage or something like that. Um, like three plus D3 or something. It seems a little weird that they wouldn't address that in some way because the railgun is really supposed to be this massive weapon. But if they reduce the cost on it and add some cool hammerhead uh, stratagems, like again, firing twice or, you know, I don't know, something, uh, <laughs> something. Uh, I can see the railgun still having a place. I mean, it has a place right now if you bring long strike. It's still fine, but in a new codex, I expect it to have a bigger place, and this rumor makes it seem like maybe that's not the case. And specifically, he called out um, ion cannons on Hammerhead, so maybe that's really where we see Hammerheads come to the forefront is seeing uh, ion cannons get an increased damage profile or increased volume of fire. I could uh, really appreciate doubling the output on ion cannon. That seems awesome. So if they were to do that, that would also be really cool. Um, and maybe that's the type of thing that they're talking about here and why ion cannon hammerheads are really gonna be where it's at with the new codex. Um, he also says that there's gonna be a few things regarding like stratagems and there's all sorts of stuff coming out, but of course he can't tell us about it because the um, you know, official announcement for the codex hasn't dropped yet, which, you know, of course that's the case. Uh, you know, not saying anything for or against whether or not uh, this person is a reliable source, but that's very convenient, uh, of course. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, either way, uh, whether these turn out to be true or completely fabricated, I think it's fun to kind of think about how these things, if they were to come uh, to fruition, how it would influence the game and what it would mean for the army. Uh, it kind of gets us in the headspace to start adapting to a new codex, even if none of the things are true. Because, you know, again, that's one of the big things with a new codex release is people want to play the exact same way that they have been playing. And, you know, that can 
take uh, a toll on you in between editions, in between codex releases. You know, if you are stuck in your ways in terms of how you approach the army, you're going to end up playing, um, you know, an entirely different game than everyone else, and it's not going to go well for you. And if you stick with that long enough, you're going to be playing, you know, third edition when everyone else is playing eighth edition. So um, it can it can really uh, drag you down. So be ready, be prepared to adapt. Think about how these things might actually influence your particular army and get ready to fight for the greater good. All right, thanks for watching everybody and of course, happy wargaming. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I wanna thank all my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, your support really makes a difference for me and I really appreciate it. Uh, special thanks goes out to No Excuse Panda, Paul Luters, Tao Oswell, Andy Young, Peter Benjamin Parker, Deverson, and Giovanni DiMaggio. Uh, you guys rock, thank you. If you liked this video particularly well, uh, head on over to Patreon and consider joining our community over there. Thanks as always and happy wargaming.